Hey folks, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography here. Hope you're having a great day today. I'm still here in my uh, temporary office in the apartment after a uh, tree had come down and smashed our house and it's being fixed right now. So please excuse the mess behind me and, uh, you know, try not to look at that or look at me. Uh, just listen. How about that? No, just kidding. Hey, it's, today I wanted to bring you um, kind of an informal image critique. And, uh, you know, when I lead workshops, uh, one of the most important parts of every workshop is, is our image review time. This is a time for uh, participants to submit some images. We all look at them. Um, I get a chance to uh, give some comments and feedback around, uh, around the images. And a lot of this work uh, in the comments and feedback is really around technical aspects, compositional aspects. Um, the, the truly artistic stuff, you know, art is a, a very subjective matter and uh, a lot of the comments I make are just opinion. Um, I've been doing this for years and I know kind of what works and what doesn't, um, but also each photographer is their own artist. And so there is no bad art. There's just art, you know, that some people like and some people don't like. So, but, but back to my point around doing image critiques, it's a, it's a really valuable time to get some uh, in-person feedback. And so I wanted to go through a few of my images for you and talk to you about a few things um, that I see in these images to help you give an idea, uh, hopefully inspire you to shoot more creatively or slow down in the field and, and think through your compositions before you push the shutter button. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So this first shot was out in the Palouse in harvest time. I was out there leading a master class for uh, a few photographers. And master classes are really focused on uh, people that really want to elevate their creative and artistic game. And so we spend a lot of time around, not around um, how to use your camera or, or basic things, but it's really around the art of composition and the art of photography and uh, this is one of the shots I took uh, uh, middle of the day one day and and when it came up on the screen as I was reviewing images recently uh, this one this one made me pause and it made me pause because there is so much sky in this shot in relation to the amount of land that's in this shot normally you know we've all probably grown up with the rule of thirds and so normally we put this line between the sky and the land somewhere on a third line, which is up here or maybe up here. You know, you know that we don't put it down the middle. We don't bisect our image. Uh, that's kind of really almost a hard fast rule. The rule of thirds is really a suggestion. So a lot of people put, put this line here on one of the third lines. I did something intentionally to break that rule or to break that suggestion, I wanted to shoot with a ton of sky and have enough land in the shot so it seemed like there was a foundation for the trucks and the tractors, but, but, but really not have an overly large amount of land in this. I really wanted to skew this towards the sky. So this was a a very intentional shot that I did, and it, it for me it worked out really well. I did shoot this with the uh, with the horizon line on the third line, uh, both above and below the halfway point. But this is kind of on a quarter line, you know, twenty five percent of the image is taken up by land and three quarters by the sky, and it's one that I really really like. And so I encourage you to to study others, study your own photograph. Know some of the suggestions, like the rule of thirds, if you don't know it already, and then break them, break everything. Do your own thing to create art, to create your own art and your own visual expression. Um, I think I would say that if you're going to break some, some sort of standards or suggestions, be really overt about it. If you're going to do an unbalanced image, make sure that the viewer knows it's unbalanced. A shot like this, it's pretty evident that I shot this 
a particular way. It wasn't a happy accident that I ended up with this relationship of sky to land. So know the rules, break the rules, and then uh, go your own way. So here's a shot from the uh, Olympic National Park up in the Salduck area. That's this little creek that flows down off the hillside, and it's a fantastic place to photograph. And uh, so this is the raw, the raw image. It hasn't been edited, so please excuse you know color and tonality in the image. And but I wanted to throw this in to sort of give you a critique that if this came up in one of my workshops, how I would walk through. Uh, maybe a, a review or a critique for one of my clients. You know, initially, it's obvious that, that the, the subject is right in here. And this is where my eyes go, right towards the middle. The water flowing over these rocks looks great. Um, so, so far, so good. You know, there's just a few little things that I would clean up in here, but that's all done in post-processing. Then, you know, our eyes typically want to flow towards the back of the image or the back of the scene. And so I start moving up. I see this really bright stick. I see this messy hillside, this bright stick, this log, and I see this whole back portion out of focus. Normally, the back of the scene, I don't mind if it's out of focus. Um, but I start to look at this back part of the image and question why this is in here. Does it help? the rest does it help the subject does it help the story does it add anything to this scene and after looking at this for a little bit i would say no it doesn't i would say that that all of this mess back here probably doesn't need to be in this photograph you know really this photograph is all about this just this middle third part of the image is just right in here so as as the photographer are there ways that you could have shot this in the field to maybe tighten this up to be a, a, a more succinct story a, a tighter composition to tell a really articulate story of these two little flows of water once i get done exploring the back then i kind of come back around these rocks and and look at the foreground you know the splash pool is great I'd clean up this little rock down here, but look at this rock here on the lower right. I got a problem with that. It's out of focus. You know, we as human creatures, we process visual information and we don't mind generally when the background is out of focus. But when foreground elements are out of focus, such as in this image, it doesn't really work. And so I've got a I've got a big problem with my photograph here that this this rock is out of focus, and is uh, and and there's just nothing you can do to salvage it. Um, and so if I was in the field, what I could have done or suggest to somebody is you could focus stack this and get those rocks in focus. I know for me I was shooting this with a medium format camera and the depth of field was pretty shallow even at f22 or f26 that i shot this at um and so i could have focus stacked this which would have been great or i could have tightened up the composition to to really just get this essence because this is the photograph right in here the rest of this is kind of noise um and so think about think about especially the out of focus areas of your image um, you know it's okay to have some in some instances, it's okay to have a foreground element that's out of focus, but it has to be the right shot. Like, um, let's say you're shooting a, f a, f a field of tulips, one of them sticking up and you can blur the foreground and the background and have that single tulip be in focus. That kind of stuff is acceptable, but, it, but in a scene like this, our brains expect the foreground to be in focus, the midground to be in focus, and most of the background to be in, in acceptable levels of focus. Um, and so that's what kind of throws us off in this type of image. So this one, yeah, you know, maybe I could crop this and it would work. But, you know, if I crop more than five to 10% of my image, um, I didn't, I wasn't successful in the field. And so sometimes I don't use those when I have to crop too much, but that's just me. Your mileage may vary. So this next image, <clears throat> this one was shot along the Oregon coast near Yahats. And uh, 
This was a magical night and this location I have been to many, many times and absolutely love it. And uh, this night that I shot this, this image, um, I shot a whole bunch of different compositions. And I wanted to pull this one out to sort of highlight something for you, the viewer, of why I think this image, it's, I would say it's a good image, it's not a great image, compositionally speaking. And the reason being is, you know, you probably know our eyes are drawn to the brightest part of a scene. And in this shot, the brightest part of the scene, besides the sunset, is this channel of water and this channel of water. So I've got these two bright channels leading out to the ocean, to the sun. And what for me as a viewer, it's been long enough since I shot this that I can look at it um, without a lot of emotion and uh, without a lot of baggage, and I can look at it critically now. And when I called this shot up again the other day, I was experiencing this interesting thing where my eyes were looking at the channel on the right, and then they would bounce to the channel on the left, and then back to the channel on the right, and I would just ping pong back and forth. This right hand channel is because it's closer to the um, to the camera and to the lens and it's a little bit larger in the scene. It's more visually dominant. So when this scene opens up, you know, the viewer is going to look right here first. And then, oh, there's another channel over here. But wait, this is bright and big. I'm going to come back here. And a lot of times people just ping pong back and forth before they eventually come out to the back of the scene and the sunset and the clouds. I shot this a different way. Uh, one of my other compositions was just with one channel, and that channel is almost right in the middle of the, in the, of, of the composition to have a really evident, obvious, strong leading line from the bottom of the frame out into the ocean and out to the horizon. That composition worked really, really well. This one doesn't work as well, in my opinion. It's still a pretty picture. It's still a good image, but it's not a great one. If I wanted to have both of these channels in the shot, which I did in a different composition, I would widen my field of view. I would include more elements in the scene and maybe position myself between the two channels looking out into the ocean so one is not more visually dominant than the other. But right now, because it's sort of a tight comp, there's not a lot of other rocks on the sides, just those two little slivers of rock. It seems like the story is about these water channels, but I don't know which one to look at. So that's why this is good and not great, in my opinion. And, and I'm being really picky here, and this is my image, so I can criticize it all I want. Yeah. So let's look at one more. This is another one from the Ho Rainforest up in the Olympic National Park. And you know, anytime you're trying to shoot ferns, ferns are tough to get a really good photograph of. There's always something not quite right. And uh, you know, every time I go to the Ho, every year I've got a workshop up there, and every year I, every year I shoot ferns, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. By and large, this image works for me. Um, the things that really stand out to me that aren't great, in my opinion, is on the left-hand side of the frame, I've got bright tones. And on the right-hand side of the frame, I've got some really dark tones. And, and it's not evenly dispersed between lights and darks. And so I feel like I'm skewing a little bit more to the left because it's bright. But then there's this black hole on the right that kind of sucks me in. So that little tonal balance, yeah, I'm not super happy with, but I think it's still acceptable. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those of you that have that, that might take a workshop uh, from me, you'll hear you'll hear me talk about space, leaving enough space around your subject so it can breathe, so it doesn't feel cramped. And in shots like this, space is really, really important. And, you know, the most obvious bit of space is between the ends of the ferns 
and the edge of the frame. If I'm too close to the edge of the frame, it's going to feel cramped. And I don't want to cut off this fern um, or cut off one branch of the fern. If I cut off one branch, I have to cut them all off to be consistent. But in this case, like on the on the left here, I've got enough space between the edge of the frame and the fern tip. Same thing down here and same thing up here. The thing I don't like is the space between this fern tip and the edge of the edge of the frame. It's way too close for my liking to be a really great image. But that's just me and I'm sensitive to space. If I could have, I would have liked to have had more space on the right. But having shot this, I know that I was really limited by what was over there and having to um, widen my field of view with my lens would have brought some other stuff in the scene that I didn't want. And I wanted to cut the bottom off just right. There's a whole lot of mess below the frame. So I was limited creatively with how much space I could, uh, I, I could bring on that right hand side. So I'm going to have to live with it. The other thing to look at is space, since we're talking about space, is space between space between um, elements. I've got space here, I got some space here, I got space here. I have just a little bit of a touch right there. I've got good space between these two. I've got great space here. I've got, I'm getting a little close here. You know, what you don't want is overlap. You don't want these, these anytime you have branches overlap or intersect, it's visually um, not as pleasing. So move your feet, move your tripod and get space between the elements. So there you have it. Just a quick image critique or review of my images. I hope you like this. Um, if you want to see me do more of this, leave me comments below. Uh, otherwise, have a great day and thanks for watching.